So Syria right now is back in talks. Um, as you said before, the U.S. wants to give Lebanon electricity through uh, through Jordan, then through uh, what's it called, Egypt, and mm. through Syria as well. So maybe they're trying to mitigate their relationships with Syria and re-legitimize them as some sort of player that they can, you know, mm. discuss these things with. Is is it is it true? Is Syria coming back? Is it like the big boogeyman? Did Syria back? ever leave <laughs> Syrian regime? Sorry, that's yeah. that's the real question. Um, uh, no, I, like I think uh, I mean to look at it geopolitically. What's there's a theme in the region of Western powers deciding that it's time to leave. We have other priorities. We've been in the Middle East for decades. It's a quagmire. We only lose and lose and lose. Like let's get out, right? So like the U.S. leaving Afghanistan so abruptly. Uh, you, you you have also a shift in among the British, among the French, to the Indo-Pacific, right? To the South China Sea in that area. That's like the new hot zone. That's the, the place where gl- the global power play is playing out more. And so I think that there is a sort of trend to kind of settle the Middle East. Like let's 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 create stability as much as we can on the part of the West. Let's create stability. And because we have other priorities. And and that I think is it can be quite dangerous uh, because stability at what cost, right? And so it's it's very interesting what's happened in the past few months, right? Lebanon was kind of isolated. Uh, the unofficial state policy since the outbreak of the Syrian war has been no contact with Damascus. Every time a minister would want to go, it would be a national scandal and, you know, it would last for a week and they would not, would forget about not have a cabinet session and then eventually they would go or they would not go. Um, now the situation is so bad that hey, there's a chance for a new political sort of uh, political, a new political path to be charted, maybe. And what was interesting is that all of this sort of happened very quickly. There was no electricity in the country because there was no fuel. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah comes out, gives a speech, says, if you can't do it, we're going to bring fuel from Iran, right? And then he warned about it uh, for, for a while. And then he said, Khalas, like, we're doing this. I believe it was the next day or the day after the U.S. ambassador calls Michel Aoun and says, we uh, would like to help you get electricity through Syria from uh, basically Egyptian via Jordan through Syria to Lebanon, right? Which is in complete contravention of the Caesar, the Caesar law, which, you know, is in, was put in place under Trump, bans any sort of dealings with the Syrian regime because of their war crimes, um, their mass killings of, of, of people in Syria. And so... Very interesting because the you know the Hezbollah Secretary General basically says I'm getting fuel from Iran and then the next day or I believe it was even that night the U.S. are like okay Khalas like listen we can actually get you we can fuel, do it too, right yeah. we, we we can do it too we'll do it you know Egypt Jordan Syria like it'll it'll be fine at the same time Lebanon is negotiating with Iraq to bring fuel as well from Iraq to to run its power plants right and it's sort of like like and as we talked about about a bit earlier like suddenly everybody wants to give Lebanon fuel like what does this mean why is this happening. And, and I think that there is a movement in the region, you know, the fact that you have uh, the U.S. allowing this to happen, there is a movement sort of away from the region, a pivot away. And I think the idea is like, listen, let's, let's stabilize, let's, let's sort things out, let's, let's be real, especially on the part of Jordan and Egypt. Uh, there's, there's marketing for Bashar al-Assad that's happening right now, right? And it's also done by certain Lebanese players. Basically, the argument is there is no stability in this part of the world unless Bashar al-Assad and Syria are welcomed back into the Arab Brotherhood and we can sort of sort things out, right? And I think that that is an argument that is gaining traction among the West because they're like, Khalas, like, come on, we've been doing this for a while, we want to move on, like, yalla, okay, what? And they prefer it over Iranian fuel in Lebanon, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's sort of like, I mean, you said the devil we know, I think it's m- maybe a bit different than that, but it's, you know, it's... How different? It's basically a lesser... A lesser, lesser devil. A lesser yeah, devil. It's uh, like right. we say in French, uh, you have to choose between la peste and le cholera. Yeah, you know, the between... plague or you know cholera. Yeah. yeah. So I, I mean, so it's you know, and and so there's that that global move, the geopolitical changes that are happening, and I think that Lebanon, in a way, has become the excuse for it. Right. It's like, look how bad things are in Lebanon. People are dying. You know, there's the hospitals are shutting down. No school year. Three years without a school year now. By the way, we've been in this country. COVID and protests, and now this. Um, so it's like, okay, let's Arab, you know, unity, let's come together as the, the Arabs and let us support Lebanon from Egypt, through Jordan, to Syria, from Iraq. And, and so, yes, it seems like Lebanon once again is kind of sort of the, 
the it's not it's not a pawn in this way because in a way we are bene- you know Lebanon is benef- benefiting from it it's but it's of, the it's excuse more of, it's more of it's, a clause in a contract right? exactly it's it's the excuse it's the thawing it's it's the thing that allows you to thaw the relations right you get people talking together who haven't talked for for decades um, and and the question is okay the, maybe we will have more power maybe like Egyptian gas would be a game changer we could run the power plants we have on gas first of all not heavy fuel oil which is much more expensive pollutes the environment and destroys the power plants by the way because it has such a high sulfur content um so it, it would be better right egyptian gas would be great but it's it's sort of like what's the trade-off here uh, are you trading stability uh for freedom for example you know you're you're you're, you're gaining stability you're gaining perhaps a little bit more electricity you can run the schools you can run the hospitals but do you have a minister of information, perhaps, who seeks to limit freedom and and sort of uh, prevent the press from criticizing politicians? That's the question, and I think that in in these kinds of situations, that that trade off can always be very sort of it it can it can be not in the favor of sort of the softer issues like culture and a free press and and freedoms. And there's always a fear of that in Lebanon. I mean, a Reuters journalist was barred entry to the country. He was deported. Uh, recently, he's a Reuters journalist Suleiman who's covered. Khalidi, right? Yeah, Suleiman Al Khalidi. He's covered Syria for a very long time. Obviously, critical coverage as it should be. Arrived at he's the airport. He's a Jordanian national, right? He's a Jordanian national. Yeah, arrived at the airport. They wanted to search his stuff. He refused, and they deported him. Um, and the, there has been no solid reasoning other than the general security saying it's a sovereign issue. Amr Siedi, which is a non-answer, right? It's it's not an answer. So that's maybe the first kind of symptom of this new regime coming to 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 control. There's another question I think that's that's also uh, interesting to ask.